This is a preprint of my response paper to Lote Leidsdorf and Helen Lawton Smith's triple, quadruple, and high order helices, historical phenomena, and neo evolutionary models, which will be published in Triple Helix Journal. In triple, quadruple, and n tuple helices, where do science and policy intersect? Park, Hanwu, Hanwu Park, Han Park at Inna.ac.k or Yeongnam University, South Korea. Peter Steck P. Dotty dot Stack at Tuttleft. NLP. Dotty dot Stack at Tuttleft. NL Delft University of Technology, the Netherlands. Introduction New challenges are arising that were not previously present, such as the COVID 19 epidemic, carbon neutrality, and fake news, amongst other things. In order to deal with these new challenges, a new networked governance operation that includes more actors than the three institutional actors of academics, business, and government needs to be established. Instead of the old triple helix model of collaboration between universities, governments, and companies, quadruple cooperation has developed as a new policy trend in higher education. Given the policy impacts of the quadruple model, the European Commission and other countries, notably South Korea, are proposing and developing the prospect of a new innovation paradigm in response to these changes. When, when compared to the long-lasting triple helix literature, despite steadily increasing discussions on the quadruple, quintuple, and untuple helix models, Park 2014 IB, it remains difficult to provide clear answers to the new model's definition and scope, agenda to focus on, related systems, and methodological measurements. In response, the writers of the article, Lote Leidsdorf and Helen Lawton Smith, propose answers to the question of how to evaluate and assess diverse quadruple helix difficulties. In addition, their empirical research, as well as software tools, provides a thorough understanding of the similarities and differences between between established triple helix models and emerging quadruple helix models, as well as the implications of these models for theoretical, policy, and industrial possibilities and consequences. Because we feel that public response has always been a key mode in knowledge production, from publishing to reviewing to citizen involvement, our purpose is to contribute to an open discussion on the piece, Park, 2020. The aim of this contribution is to highlight some of the main challenges that remain and to suggest some alternative pathways for future research. In particular, we address the tension between policy and science, the conceptual issue of socio-technological decisions within a helix framework, and the empirical options available for assessing the quadruple helix. Helix Policy and science, are we comparing apples and oranges? It was the collaboration of Etzkowitz and Leidsdorf that ushered in the transition from the double to triple helix in the late 1990s, and the development of a dynamic model that can measure the degree of independent, competitive, and interactive information exchange in the knowledge production process, which is a significant achievement in the field. While Leidsdorf's dynamic triple helix model was developed primarily for academic objectives, the most notable distinction between it and the present quadruple helix is the incorporation of a wide range of policy viewpoints. As a result, doing academic analysis of a politically established agenda appears to be highly problematic and insufficient. Wide range of policy viewpoints as a result, doing academic analysis of a politically established agenda appears to be highly problematic and insufficient. Rather than being passively handed down from the outside under the leadership of a certain institutional actor, Leidsdorf highlights that the knowledge system is formed from an internal network dynamic that has developed over time through interaction. It is asserted that the knowledge structure generated at a specific time in the process evolves by restricting or activating the innovation system via the trajectory and regime concepts of knowledge formation and evolution. His idea has been empirically validated to a large extent through the use of bibliographic data and scientometric network indicators. A similar line of reasoning is advanced by the Leidsdorf and Lawton Smith in their latest paper, who also assert that the quadruple helix unit of analysis is also an interacting triad relationship. Several European and Asian countries, including South Korea, are discussing quadruple and quintuple helices in the context of open innovation to address a variety of societal concerns and to bring together sometimes opposing perspective.
perspective. Therefore, when applying scientific concepts and indicators to policy agendas, we must take construct validity into consideration. Is it necessary to develop a new unit of analysis in place of triad relationships in this regard? There are arguments to be made in favor and against, because in normative science, a static model can view mutual relations as output rather than input of a quadruple helix. The quadruple helix, in contrast to the classic triple helix, is not a novel model that is limited to the established processes of scientific knowledge and research and development. Instead of universities, for example, non-profit organizations and civic advocacy groups have emerged as important players in the process of developing, thereby demonstrating their ability to generate novelty in the field of knowledge production. Living labs can be regarded as good examples. Van Gene Wiesen, 2016 Those in the business world who pursue social entrepreneurship are not only pursuing financial prosperity, but they are also willing to take risks in order to respond to various government-mandated programs and address societal concerns such as economic inequality, environmental degradation, and crime. When it comes to n-tuple helix interactions, one can wonder, does the decrease of uncertainty in the division of labors and the division of labor still matter in the ideal configuration of higher-order helices? In a world where the boundaries between universities, corporations, and governments are becoming increasingly blurred, and their functions are becoming increasingly ambiguous, it is challenging to find empirical data that can be used to quantify the knowledge dynamics of reciprocal trade. The concept of social networks, which is defined as three interconnected entities with humans, or organizations, as the unit of analysis, must be revised in order to more accurately measure a number of new institutional actors involved in multilateral helix innovation across countries and regions. Helices 2 is dynamic, 3 a regime, for a transition? The adding of strands to a double helix is seen as fundamentally changing an innovation system from a dynamic one to a triple helix regime. However, Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith question whether a fourth or NTH strand adds further analytical value. Laidsdorf has often noted that moving from interaction between two actor types, double helix, to three actor types, triple helix, creates an important additional dynamic, the opportunity for two parties to cooperate against a third party, changing the dynamics from a trajectory, stable, moving around an equilibrium, to a regime, complex, nonlinear and unstable. However adding a fourth, fifth or NTH helix, according to Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith, add to the sum of the three helices, but create no new dynamics, beyond that of their subtriple helices. P28 this comment provides an interesting perspective not just on the quadruple helix concepts of Karyanis and Campbell, 2010, but also on the more recently emerging literature about the multi-level perspective on socio-technical transitions, see Giels et al. 2017. 2017, socio-technical transitions involve a wide range of actor types including politicians and activists and not just policymakers, emergent and incumbent firms which have opposing interests, cultural influences which can change consumer preferences, media, regulatory bodies, different levels of government, etc. Giels et al., 2017, right transitions are not only about the market diffusion of new technologies, but also about changes in user practices, cultural discourses, and broader political struggles. Transitions are therefore not tame, but disruptive, contested, and nonlinear processes. P-464, as a result transitions require complex negotiations and trade-offs between multiple objectives and constraints, including cost-effectiveness, equity, social acceptance, legitimacy, political feasibility, resilience, and flexibility. P-464. While Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith recognize that this complexity exists, they also claim that it creates no new dynamics beyond the triple helix. So when following this perspective, shifts in socio-technical regimes can be explained by the rise and fall of different triple helix relationships. Within the context of low-carbon energy transitions, this could mean, for example, the decline of an old energy innovation triple helix and the rise of a new energy innovation triple helix, which might be brought about by a third consumer politics venture capital triple helix influencing these other innovation actors. 
Essentially, Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith appear to be breaking down these complex systems to its building blocks, sets of interacting triple helix systems, which can be analyzed separately. This broken down triple helix view of looking at complex systems and the quadruple or n-tuple helix provides a novel analytical paradigm for approaching complex innovation systems. Because of Laidsdorf and colleagues' empirical approach, see also Ivanova and Laidsdorf 2014, which focuses on information redundancy generation, synergy and knowledge production. Production, this concept, can also be validated by future research. For example, does the decline of the university industry government triple helix in South Korea? Park and Laidsdorf 2010, lead to the creation of another stronger university industry international, Triple Helix? Kwan, Park and Laidsdorf, 2012. At the same time, the approach of reducing complex systems to a collection of triple helices risks overlooking certain overarching dynamics that the literature on socio-technical transitions and higher-order helices aims to capture. Reducing complex systems to triple helices may be a useful descriptive analytical approach, but what causes the shifts in technological regimes? Who are the main actors? Can a successful triple helix system with high levels of synergy suddenly collapse due to an external shock? Then what is the predictive or policy value of a classical university industry government triple helix approach? Perhaps we need a quadruple helix or entuple helix to understand the functioning of these socio-technical transitions, which have far broader societal implications. Implications While many policymakers and academics have already arrived at this conclusion, Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith note the challenges of such an approach. An empirical direction for the quadruple helix Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith essentially caution against focusing on higher-order helices from a very practical perspective, instead of specifying new and more helices, for example, for palatial reasons, we suggest keeping the model simple so that they can be used for the precise, and where possible numerical and visualized, evaluations, p27, from this perspective, reducing the quadruple helix to four interacting triple helices avoids theorizing that cannot be empirically evaluated. Evaluated. While the advice of Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith makes sense, the visualization of a quadruple helix is relatively simple in practice, with four overlapping sets. See Figure 1. Gathering bibliometric data on a fourth helix is also feasible. In addition to industry, government, and universities, foreign institutions often play a notable role in national innovation systems and can be identified from bibliometric data, see for example Kwan, Park and Laidsdorf 2012. Depending on the data set, it is also possible to make a distinction between large conglomerates and smaller firms, or between firms active in different sectors, see for example, Steck and Van Gene Wiesen 2015. While we take seriously the observation by Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith that higher level helices create no new dynamics beyond that of their subtriple helices, P27, it is compelling and appears feasible to explore the possibility of additional fourth helix dynamics nonetheless. In addition to studying the constituent triple helices, the overlap of a quadruple helix at HABCD may provide an opportunity to measure further synergies, which in turn help better understand shifts in technological regimes and their constituent triple helices. For instance, a period of heightened quadruple helix formation could signal that such a shift is underway and would also greatly enhance the socio-technical transition literature of Giels et al., 2017, and others. Heightened quadruple helix formation could signal that such a shift is underway and would also greatly enhance the socio-technical transition literature of Giels et al., 2017, and others. An empirical exploration of the quadruple helix, in the same manner that Laidsdorf and Ivanova have empirically explored the triple helix, would keep the quadruple helix literature scientifically grounded and would greatly enhance its scientific credibility. Conclusion we hope that these brief comments have managed to highlight both the great contribution by the authors with regards to the triple and quadruple helix literature, and shown some areas where scientific debate continues and further conceptualization and empirical research are needed. 
We share Laidsdorf and Lawton Smith's concern that the quadruple helix concept lacks a strong scientific foundation, but we believe the existence of quadruple helix dynamics should not be dismissed out of hand. While it is important to recognize the growing complexity of new and emerging problems and the networked governance that is emerging to address them, the power of such ideas is greatly enhanced by solid scientific research that provides empirical evidence. In terms of the quadruple helix as it stands today, we have a basic concept, but we are still seeking proof of concept. In addition to these fundamental scientific concerns, many other conceptual and practical questions remain about higher-order helices, such as the quadruple helix model. There appears to be no consensus on what they are, how they differ from traditional models, where the intuple helix is, how to implement it at the policy level, how to develop and support it, or what factors should be taken into consideration in order for all of these discussions to be fruitful. fruitful. None of the above remarks are intended to deny or discredit the author's arguments or research findings, rather, we are seeking to determine whether they are appropriate or sufficient for answering a number of new goals and concerns pertaining to the quadruple helix. We humbly conclude that many questions about the quadruple or n-tuple helix remain. References <laughs>